Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraj here, back with a new video lesson for you all. In today's lesson, I want to talk about playing through changes, but discussing one very simple principle that involves some deep diving, but it's super simple. I promise you that much. All right. So before I get to the actual lesson, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and enable your notifications so you don't miss any videos that I put out. Okay. And there will be an extended video of this on the membership platform. So for those of you who are already signed up on the platform, don't miss out on the extended video. All right. So now yesterday I was doing a lesson with one of my students who I've been working with for a while now about I want to say close to two years, if not longer. So we were discussing how a lot of the principles of playing through changes come through knowing your common notes and uncommon notes between the changes. Now that sounds rather funny, but you can break it down with a formula of sorts, which allows you to focus on the primary notes between different key centers that actually create the difference between the two key centers. Okay. So before I go any further, what I want to establish is that any scale, any two scales will share at least one note in common. Okay. Um, at least one. Usually they would share about two. So now you might think this is based off of an estimation. This is actually based off of sitting down and figuring out scales. Let's take, for instance, C major and D flat major. So C and F is common on both the scales. Okay. So C would be one and four in C major. In D flat, it would be seven and three. Okay, now if I took, so that's two notes in common when scales are half step apart. And this is true for any scales that are half step apart. B flat and B, same thing. Your B flat and E flat or A sharp and D sharp would be common in both scales. So when you take scales that are a whole step apart, C and D, Okay, so you have D, E, G, A, and B. Five notes in common. What are the two notes that actually separates the two? It's the sharps. Your F sharp and C sharp. You flatten those, you immediately get C major scale. So, what I would suggest is, even before you try to sit down with actual chord progressions, Take two scales like this, okay, that are a whole step apart. So now you know any scales that are a whole step apart, they will have five notes in common. Okay, so what I like to focus on is the actual common notes first. So D, E. So that's an E minor pentatonic. works over both the chords and that's also because they share those notes functionally speaking okay so now naturally the question will come up what if my c major is a lydian if it's a lydian then of course you have six notes in common which would include the f sharp 
and now the only difference between the two scales becomes C sharp. Humidity. Okay, so of course if I did D Lydian, then of course the notes shared would change. The notes that are not shared would also possibly change. So now you might think, okay, cool. What's the point of doing all this? A lot of times what gets to us when we're trying to play through changes is actually knowing how to schematically lay out ideas across changes. It's one thing when you're playing against one chord and then you're throwing all your half-step substitutions and all that crap. But if you have four chords, what do you do there? How are you actually going to play outside of chord tones and the scales that are relevant to the chord? Okay. So as far as the actual material goes, chord tones and scales relevant, these two actually make up common notes and the uncommon notes between the set of changes. So what I used to do was I would take a particular standard or write out my own chord progression and then try to map out the common notes and then the uncommon notes and try to find ways to just play them over okay so this track that i just played over is actually from my upcoming ebook um, and um, it's not a backing track that's actually as it's a com composition that i wrote a solo i wrote over those set of changes which works around the same principles that we are discussing right now okay using common notes and uncommon notes to create the pathway so technically speaking, if you think about it, a C major 7 to D major 7, what actually brings forth the change is the F and C going to F sharp and C sharp. These are the two notes that actually spell out the change that's happening. Because let's say if I have a C major 7 here right now. Now, with the common notes. Combine the two. Okay, so in fact, I have this tendency to hit what people refer to as the money notes when I actually change from one chord to the other. I practice this way and also this is possible because I used to sit, write down all my 12 major scales, all my 12 melodic minor scales and your four diminished scales because they exist in three forms by default so you don't have to do 12 keys there. Map out commonalities between scales. Okay, so you, I told you, you can break it down in a formula. Half step apart, two notes. Whole step apart, five notes. Um, minor third apart, I believe it would be four notes. Major third apart, let's see, C major and E major. You have B, E, A. Um, yeah, three notes in common when they're a major third apart. So the main differences would be C, D, F, and G. Move that up a half. Okay, so that really spells out. Common notes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I hope you get the gist of it. The idea is take your scales, map them out, write them out. If you can do this on a fretboard, even better. And pay attention to the commonalities and the differences between different scales. Because I promise you there's no additional scale or 13th note for a chord to be there that's going to trip you up. If you figure this out, what it gives you is the leverage to actually play through changes without having to be overly concerned about chord tones and scales that are relevant, right? You will be able to look at a set of chords and go, okay, so these are the couple of notes that I can actually intentionally target to bring about the change. If I want to make it more subtle, I go for the common notes or note in certain cases. So I hope this makes sense, all right? There is a PDF for you to check out where I give you a gist of what's going on here. All right, so I hope you get something out of this and I will see you guys in the shed until the next one. Peace.